Hello, everybody. My name is Sylvia Fischer, and on the occasion of the Frankfurt Book Fair, I want to make a short reading of the first chapters of my book, which I call Living Without Money in English. So far, it is published only in German. I will show you quickly how it looks like. I'm, it, it's called the Vagabunden blog, the blog Vagabond or the wandering blog. Um, from Leben ohne Geld is like from life without money. Sylvia Fischer. And I really would like to publish it in English, but I definitely need some help. So um, like proofreading or finding a publisher. So if you um, know anybody, let me know. Um, I want to say in the beginning, it was possible. I tried it for, for one year or I lived for one year nearly without money. I spent 88 euros the whole year through, like eight euro a month. Um, it was not so luxurious, I admit, but I was very happy and I can say Till today, it was uh, the happiest year of my life. Especially because it was a dream to live like that. And this dream became true. Actually, five years after I wanted that so much for the first time. Uh, there were other reasons why I choose to really live like that. Um, one was that I read in the New Testament, in the Revelations, what will happen in the end of the times. And that everybody will, who wants to buy and sell will get the mark of the beast, is three times six. So I thought, and what happened? What will happen to those people who take this mark? And I thought, oh my goodness, I don't want that. So how it'll go to be if I don't want to buy and sell anything. And that's why I tried to live like that. And it worked out. Yeah, I live, I'm still alive. I found everything I needed somehow. Um, also, it was one reason I wanted to follow Jesus somehow. Uh, and it's, it's written like, uh, yeah, if you want to follow me, give uh, up everything you have. So I tried that. Many, many years later now, I know that it was a um, um, uh, mistake in the translation. Actually, uh, it is to give up many things, but not everything. <laughs> but anyway, I tried and I had my fun. And also, I, when I was a child, I, and always I was suffering that people had no time because they had to earn money. So, this, and there are different other reasons, but I don't want to bore you with, with all this. So, um, some or chapters, exactly eight, um, I published already in English on story dot one or story point one. And I will share my screen and and read it, but then the rest you can read on your own. It's not perfect yet. I really would need help uh, to make it better. I tell you, and I'm happy for everybody who Oh, yeah, one wants to help to make it uh, better and more perfect than it is in the moment. Okay, so my screen is here. Living without money is here.
Living Without Money, Part 1. Opening of the Vagabond blog, 6th of August, 2009, a Thursday. Current mood laid back. I recently typed my diary for over an hour for the first release as a blog, and then everything was gone. Simply delete it. It was the last day that the library of the law faculty, which I like best, was open before the summer holidays. But fortunately, there are still other libraries. I spent three days at Puppies, where Thierry and Luke had invited me individually. Puppy is an elderly gentleman in his 80s who Luke has been looking after for a few months. Puppy is a term of endearment which the French use for old men, like dad or grandpa. Luc is sort of a Rastafarian, dark-skinned, with long dreadlocks and a cool beard, and he's also got a lot of sayings in store. The problem is that he's quite fond of the distilled drops known as Caribbean rum. When Luke first came into Puppy's house, there wasn't even water. Luke took care of it and got the water running again. My friend Thierry has been staying there for three days. I thought it was nice to be with Thierry again after that long break in winter. I had often spent the night in his car, but then I hadn't seen him for a long time. I did a lot of cleaning in his bachelor flat of puppy, and on Sunday morning, we went to a flea market to sell some things, which Thierry had found, but we weren't very successful. However, the expenses were covered. During my cleaning activity, Thierry smoked the apartment with lavender. That's what my grandmother and my mother used to do with different herbs. Oh yes, I do that with sage, I told him. When we were alone, he told me about Papi. He was in the Foreign Legion and has four children. He was shot nine times and had many replaced and bones. That's why he looks like that. I saw his whole body. He showed me all of his scars. He was in Algeria during the war. In the afternoon, I walked to the next village and found a few things that could be useful a remote control for the TV, insoles, and a calendar with maps. After three days, I left the gentleman and hitchhiked to a monastery where they were looking for volunteers for the summer. But they only took school and university students. As it was already getting dark, I stayed in the nearest town, which I thought was a very pleasant place when I went there. 
I found something to eat at the bakery. Kish, a cheese stick, and a crab, and later a house where I could spend the night in a small corridor in front of the entrance. The owners had obviously been gone for a long time. As I walked on the street, two smart guys wanted to take me away with them, but I politely declined that offer. With squealing tires, they came rolling towards me. Whenever I think of them, I get scared and anxious. Make love, I heard him shouting out of the car window. A blonde has been a dream of mine. Even though they tried to lure me to a swimming pool, I declined. Act two. It was really luxurious in that house that I found where the inhabitants obviously weren't at home with table and garden chairs with light and water from a garden hose. I took a quick shower with it in the evening, naked and in the open air. The next morning, I stopped by the free clothing store and dropped off some of the clothes I had found just before. I was allowed to take a sleeping bag as well as two towels and drink as much as coffee as I wanted. I loved that very much. Of the new clothes I got, I decided to go with a white t-shirt and an Indian skirt with sequins. It didn't seem to look bad because two men I hitchhiked with, one after the other, mind you, tried to hit on me. One of them even grabbed me when I was getting out. That had never happened to me before. I was really upset. The other one wanted to take me for a walk in the mountains, but stopped touching me when I moved his hand. The day before, a motorcyclist had also tried the same thing. It was holiday season, and must have been because of that. Because the man didn't know what to do. <laughs> Back at Puppies. Monday, 10th of August, 2009. Current mood, cheerful. I went back to the countryside this weekend to visit Puppy. I had to wait a long time this time, but someone from the neighboring village brought me right to the front door. Thierry invited him for a glass of cider as a thank you. He was just outside the door when I arrived and lit a fire. For the barbecue, the stranger said, and here I am. 
I had forgotten many details in my summary last time, such as the thing with the fire. Thierry said there was an explosion with the gas stove. They must have used the wrong gas. The small bottles for the camping stove were empty, so Thierry had taken a metal box and put it on two stones and made fire on it. The pots were put on a grate for breakfast, lunch and dinner. There was enough wood in the nearby forest. I found two cooking plates in the city these days and I brought them with me. Terry taped a missing plug to them and then the thing worked, both cooking plates wonderful. Due to a short secret that occurred at one point, only a few lights in the house were working and the water had a strange taste. So I prefer to get water to drink from somewhere else. I would rather not talk about the toilet ca that cannot be used. The TV was running day and night at extreme volume. Luke said, I can always tell when I get to the village whether puppy is home or not. Because the television was so loud. On weekends, I went swimming in a pool run by people who were away for the weekend. The next time I went there, they were there. There was no fence around the property, so it was easy to get in. The sunsets were simply spectacular. The sunset next to the nearby mountain painted the sky in orange and red almost every day. While roaming around in a nearby small town, I found again loads of useful things. A bag with semi-defrosted frozen food, ice cream was in there as well, raspberry and sorbet and coconut. So I went straight for it. Unfortunately, I missed out on a small new carpet which I didn't take with me right away. Someone else had found it and took it. I left the bolster and the food I had taken with me on the way through the garden where I had laid down twice when the residents were still on vacation. I continued walking along the red and white market path to a hermitage. It was signposted for a one and a half hours walk and went up a 650 meter high mountain with a wonderful view on both sides. It was simply breathtaking. As I was the only one on the way, I assumed that it was actually forbidden to hike there at this moment, as that was the case for the other mountains in the area after 11 o'clock in the morning. The reason for that is the danger of fires. 
I also found, among other things, bathroom and kitchen wall paint, two black skirts that fitted me, and six seat cushions. Besides a sunflower from the field around the corner, which I also took with me, I was especially happy about the skirts. The one I have worn so far was more as good for flamenco dancing. The new ones are asymmetrical, but that's fine. Sandals were also included. With my wanderings through the area, the weekend just flew by. The next day, I let Thierry drop me off about six kilometers from the city. And I walked the rest of the way. My desire to hitchhike has been a bit subdued lately because of the pushy man I had encountered. Monday, 17th of August, 2009, current mood, upbeat. During the week, I was in my parking lot, this time with a whole row of stuffed animals at the head of my mattress, which I had found at amidst tons of stuff. The next morning, a gentleman came by, peeking over the fence, saying, well, you seem to be doing well there. Thanks, I said. Most days, I went to the swimming pool at seven in the evening. The ticket office closed at seven, PM. You can swim until quarter past seven, then you have a quarter of an hour to shower and get dressed. For someone who doesn't have her own swimming pool and no money to pay entrance fees, that's not bad in the heat of the southern France. Better to spend 10 minutes in the water rather than not at all. The first time I did that, I felt like the newborn baby. The two vagabond cafes in the city had both taken a two week summer break, which means there was no coffee and no breakfast in the morning. What made things a bit Boring. That is why I went out into the countryside again on Wednesday and brought a lot of useful stuff to puppy. A practically new shower curtain. The old one had an antique value. A bedspread with which I covered one of the desolate beds in the other room and a lot of fruits and vegetables, which I picked up from the market where I passed by shortly before the end of the day. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed a little bit. If you like the video, let me know, make a, a, a like. Uh, if you like the video, you can share with others. You can submit to the channel and leave a commentary. I'm very happy about every nice commentary. Thank you so much. And I like also positive feedback. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. See you.